as the motto is momentum, in 2011, I came to Germany and my life was put completely upside down because I've never been anywhere further than Senegal before and Senegal is could be even mistaken for Gambia. So Gambia and Senegal are really um, intertwined. Um, that, that was the furthest that I ever went to. And in 2011, I came to Germany. And uh, fast forward, January 2012, I had my first day of school in Germany. And as I said, I stayed three months at home and I was learning vocabularies. My dad was helping us and um, many people were helping us. So basically, I was thinking, okay, I'm really good at this language. And um, the, that day actually turned out being the most horrifying day of my life in Germany. No, actually, the most horrifying day of my life in Germany was the day that I first encountered a washing machine. Now, that was terrifying. Have you ever seen washing machines and the way they spin around? I don't know, like you just see them spinning around and if you do not know what's happening, and that was it with me, I didn't know what was happening. So I literally thought that my family was going to die. That was horrifying, really. <laughs> um, yes, so um, what made that day, that first school day horrifying was, number one, the kids were totally different. So it was just a cultural shock. Um, on that very cold winter morning, I went to the, to the bus stop and I was really energetic and optimistic. So I went there and the kids were standing there. So I just went, hello to everyone. I was smiling really widely and people were just looking at me like, oh, what is she doing? So <laughs> eight winters later, I completely understand why they wouldn't say back hello. It's winter. I mean, it was really cold and nobody wanted to go to school, I guess. So I wasn't helping. Um, yeah, and then, as I said, I stayed three months at home. I learned the language and I thought, okay, everyone's going to communicate with me in German and I'm just going to be fine. It turned out to be that everyone was trying to show me their English skills. So everyone was like, yeah, how are you? And I was like, I can speak German. But then I realized, oh, I can't speak German because my teacher asked me to introduce myself and I didn't find the excerpt, but it was really funny. I read it years later and it was just Ich um, Heisen, Aisha or something. I don't know, it was really bad. So um, I couldn't speak, I definitely couldn't speak German after three months. And um, yeah, the kids were different, as I said. Um, I don't know how many of you didn't grow up in Germany or grew up in Africa, but in Gambia, for example, you just do not say no. Like most of us cannot say no. If, you, if my friend would say to me, let's go to the market. If I were to, wanted to go or just wanted to do something else, I'd just say yes, because she's my friend and that's just what you do. So you never say no. And um, in Germany, I started, um, I started interacting with the kids and then I would, they would ask me, okay, let's do this. And I said, yes, yes, let's do that. Yes, yes. And then I would ask them, okay, let's do this. And they go, nah, I don't feel like doing it. So that was a cultural shock. And at that time, I didn't realize that it was actually something very normal. So for me, it was like, okay, they really do not want to hang out with you, but they just being very polite and just, just stay away. That's basically a no. So it was really hard for me at that point. And um, yeah, so I decided, of course, I had to. At first, I, I didn't decide to, I had to learn the language. So um, my first question to you guys, I'm going to be very unconventional and I just ask you what motivates people to learn new languages? What motivates people to learn new languages? Any of you have ever learned a new language? To integrate, of course, yeah. What else? Love, Love yes. <laughs> what else? First, um, the thing was, I always wore the, the hijab, so the headscarf, and um, I did also when I, was, when I came to Germany, I was already wearing the hijab at 15. So um, it was not an option for me to take off my hijab and 
as I was different as a black person, that was also, I cannot rub off my skin color or anything. So I, I realized the way, the fastest way of belonging is just understanding the language and being able to communicate with the people. And um, racism and discrimination. So I cannot talk about this topic without having to um, mention racism and discrimination. When I came to Germany, I saw that my parents, for example, and many of the people, the black people that I knew, I saw that they were treated a little bit different. So not always, but sometimes they would be treated really different, and not different in a kind way, but different in a harsh way, or just different in a way that, um, I don't know, they do not get the chance that other people get. So um, I decided, okay, I'm definitely going to talk about this injustice happening. So basically confidence, to be able to stand anywhere and just be able to say what I had to say without having to fear that people are not, are not going to understand what I'm saying or that they're not, uh, that, yeah, I'm just not gonna be able to communicate what I have to say. Um, yes. So my next question, how do you learn a new language effectively? Mind you, effectively. The first thing that I think I found very important is that you need, always need to keep in mind why you are learning the, the language. So what is your goal? What, why, what pushes you to learn the new language? Why do you want to master this new language? Um, yes, and language is, learning anything gets boring sometimes. So I think learning languages, it doesn't matter what kind of motivation you have, sometimes you just, do not feel like going to the class, or you just want to give up. Uh, but then if you know what your goal is, I think that actually helps you um, just don't, to not give up and go on. And um, be extra. Um, number one of the extra things that I did was trying to memorize any dictionary at all that I could get hold of. So I would just memorize random dictionary and Best of all, dictionaries of really old German. So the vocabulary was really old. I would be like, yeah, this is mein Knecht, or something like that. <laughs> it's really confusing, and it doesn't help, because people keep on asking you, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? So it definitely didn't help. And number two, what I did was I memorized random poems and songs. That actually really helps because it was funny. I had fun torturing my sisters with my very nice voice. And um, I can remember the, the poems, the verses, still up to now. So it definitely helps. Um, make learning the new language fun. Making the, le the learning the new language fun was reading new books. I read, I think I read at least five, okay, maybe not five, but Almost five books a week, I would, instead of sleeping, I would be reading and reading in the bus, in lessons, because I, I didn't understand the language yet, mostly. I would just take books with me and to the classes, and I would read and read and read, and it helped. So it, it turned out to, to help. Um, and for me, not only reading books was making the new language, made the new language fun, but the theatre club. So I joined my school theatre club from the ninth grade to graduation, and it was the best thing that I ever did. How and why I started um, writing. First of all, um, so there was this, again, I have a thing which called winter mornings. I was really agitated about going to school, I guess maybe because maths or something, I can't remember. But um, I remember on that winter morning, I was a bit agitated, and I was on my way to school. So this bicycle guy, I was about to cross the zebra crossing, and he came really fast, and he almost hit me. And then he goes in very bad English. He says something like, um, be careful or something. I can't remember what exactly he said, but I remember I was really mad because that was about... Four years, okay, I came to, an, yeah, four years into learning German. So I was like, I turned around, I wasn't angry about him not saying sorry, but I was angry about him speaking English to me. So I turned around, I was like, ich kann auch Deutsch, I can speak German. So I turned back and I 
bumped into a pole. So, yeah, that was really bad. And I think I started crying or something. And I put my frustration and all that anger, I just put it in really bad, unstructured German sentences. And um, the next time I saw this guy, random guy, he didn't know me, I didn't know him. And he decided that it was a very good idea if he would be very kind to me. So he called me the N-word. He started saying very nice stuff to me. And um, he almost pat in my face. So um, I was really angry. I guess anyone he happened to would be really angry and would be just, would, you would just want to explode or at least say something. But I couldn't. Kind of a therapy. And then... When I realized kind of that I, was, I had a thing for writing, I decided, okay, you, you need a challenge. So I joined my writing club at the school. Then writing turned to be a challenge, something of a challenge. When I joined the writer's club, um, there was just so many rules. I, I do not like rules. So they started saying, you need to write it like this and that. And basically, writing became very boring until... I found out that my, 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 my school was participating in a poetry slam competition for the first time. I didn't know what poetry slam meant at that time, but I was really interested because writing as a challenge, so I needed a new challenge. And I was beginning to like my school. I was getting along with the kids very well. So I, was, I, liked, it. I liked it, actually. I started liking my school, and then graduation was just ahead of us. Um, yeah, so I was very sad, and um, I decided, this was my first, part of my first poetry slam, so it goes, Jedes Mal passiert das, das Gleiche. Ich bin eine unheilbare Schülerin, hatte, habe und werde doch nie lernen können. In Wahrheit will ich es auch nicht. Ich will nie lernen können, wenn es hieße, eine Person, wenn es hieße, eine Person trotz Trennung nicht ein Leben lang lieben zu dürfen. The competition, I actually won that competition and that was the first poetry slam that I won. It was as if I was being crowned for all the four hard four-year work that I was doing and it was very nice so that motivated me to write even further and yeah. Um, yes and as I said before, I don't know if you guys are still awake or if you're already sleeping. <laughs> are you awake? <laughs> Okay, so um, I said before that I didn't reply. If anybody said anything, I wouldn't reply. I would just leave or I wouldn't say anything. The first thing, one of the first things that I did when I knew, okay, I actually am good at writing, was write this response to everyone that has said anything bad or had done something, maybe with um, I don't know, realizing or not realizing it, I just wrote this answer. And I'll just go ahead. So, eins. Ich hasse, wie du mich anstarrst. Ich hasse, wie du mich anstarrst, als wäre ich Dreck. Als wäre ich eine Person, welche, als wäre ich eine Krankheit, welche zu vermeiden ist. Ich bin weder Dreck noch eine Krankheit. Ich bin ein Mensch, ein Mensch aus Fleisch und Blut, genau wie du. Ich nehme an, dass du aus Fleisch und Blut bist oder vielleicht doch aus Eis, denn die Kälte, mit der du mich anstarrst, kann nicht einfach so sein. Zwei. Hör auf damit, ständig einen Narren aus dir zu machen, indem du versuchst, mir irgendetwas zu erklären. Auf Englisch. Mit einer einfachen Frage hättest du dir und mir die ganze Peinlichkeit ersparen können. Ich hasse es, wenn du einfach so annimmst, ich könnte kein Deutsch. Du redest mit mir, als wäre ich dumm, ein Kind, ein Alien aus einer anderen Welt. Steht vielleicht in meinem Gesicht dumm oder kein Deutsch geschrieben? Ich sage nichts. Denn aus Rache? will ich mir deine alberne Erklärung anhören und am Ende dir sagen, well, thank you so very much for the enlightenment, aber ich glaube, auf Deutsch könnten wir uns auf, beim nächsten Mal besser verständigen. Drei. Ich bin ein von Gott erschaffenes Panzerglas. Dornblicke können mich nicht stechen. Eisige Worte, sie machen mich nur stärker. Als Gott mich erschuf, muss er etwas Besonderes im Sinn gehabt haben, denn er erschuf mich so singulär, so einzigartig, so stark, dass ich für ein von Generation dass ich ein von Generation zu Generation gegen mich übertragener Diskriminierung, Rassismus, sinnloser Hass überleben könnte. Ich bin einzigartig, ich bin geduldig, ich bin verzeihend, ich bin stark, 
ich bin anders, ich mag Andersartigkeit und ich mag das Anderssein. Dankeschön.